of looking at the road going across the tracks. And you can see I've used some sidewalks, I, I mean some curb stones. And basically how I made the curb stones was I just got some gray, put, gray putty um, that you could bake and I made them into little strips. And then I um, put them in the oven, baked them, and then I put them all around this track. And also you can just barely see in this that with the asphalt that I use, I'm crowning the road, which is something that's difficult to do uh, with like say the Woodland Scenics roll out paper, but I can crown the road. So just as normal roads do that, you're getting your water to flow to the sides and then go into your drain holes um, along the sides. Also, you can see in this, a manhole cover on the left-hand side of the, of the road. Uh, just another shot of um, this specific module. Okay. It just, just basically tells you what I've got on this module. I've got four of um, George Selios's modules all on one two foot by four foot section. And so I've got 13 structures and three different tracks all, all on one thing. So I got a lot of money invested in this one module. Um, but this is how I started it, okay? And again, I'm showing you this because, you know, this was my beginning process on how I was going to actually put the roads in and how am I gonna put in the roads? Basically, I have it back to front because the front track really is is the back track, and then the double tracks are in the back at this point. But basically, I put the George Celios is is a um, a resin that you mix together. It's a two part resin, and um, it's a polyurethane foam set. And I sort of put that down first. And the reason why I like to use this stuff, and the times I like to use it. And sometimes I don't. The Fall River, I'm using grout, but this one I'm using the foam. And the reason why I'm using the foam is because I ride bicycles a lot. And when I ride my bike, I notice how uneven the road, it, the ground is. So you can get some nice elevations with the foam, depending on how thick you sort of put the stuff in in certain sections. And then once I've got this piece put together, I'll start laying out my, my buildings. So I built the buildings. And then I started to place them around on the set. And I kept on moving the buildings around uh, in an effort to figure out where to put the road, which is really what this whole clinic's about, is putting in a road. So, I mean, you can't really put in a road unless you kind of know where the road's got to go. And it's kind of a catch-22. You've got to get your buildings in, I think, first, okay, um, to, to sort of make a nice contour for your roads, road and here I've got, um, you know, my, uh, that's a gas station. It doesn't look it yet, but it is a gas station. You can also see the crown on the roof that um, um, I did with getting a piece of balsa and cutting it and using a whittle knife and whittling it down. And um, here I'm sort of testing where I want the buildings. Uh, didn't quite fit right for me at that point. So I, I'll keep on juggling my buildings around. And also you can see this square piece here. I built this sort of like a ramp for the gas station and I'm trying to figure out where to put this on the layout um, and how it's gonna um, sort of feed into the, um, into the roadway. Okay, so here <clears throat> I finally figured out where I wanted my buildings. I mean, it took a while to sort of sort them around. If you've looked at the videos, they, they seem to move around a little bit. But I, I said, this is where I want them. And then I used a magic marker and decided to sort of draw where I wanted the, the roadway. So it's like, okay, that's where it's gonna go. And this is, this is, this is that car uh, on that little pad I was able to sort of cut through and put this, this pad into my foam, which is the nice thing about Joel Bragdon's uh, polyurethane resin, 
you can sort of notch pieces out and you can sort of put it in straight and you can notch everything all out and then put a sign, tiny piece of um, uh, balsa wood underneath if you need to. And this is where I'm just using the chisel to sort of cut out the road. Um, and here it is cut out entirely and where all my building's gonna be, I've cut that out just to sort of get some realistic looks to it. And then once I've done that, um, I'm sort of putting some um, casting plaster in here or some hydrogel and sort of beefing up my road a little bit in certain areas. And um, as you can see here, what I've done where this building is, I've, I've kind of used that balsa wood, like I said, and sort of inlaid that in to get a nice flat surface, even though the elevation around it is sort of uh, moving, moving about and very hilly. And as you see, there's a railroad track in the back as well. Uh, that's set down with the whole building together. I just back it up. That's it. With one piece, that's a garage section or will be the garage section that you saw earlier. And then that's, that's sort of sitting just right and the road looks right to me at this point. So I think I'm going to keep it as is. Um, this is just a little bit more as, a, as the buildings get placed in, um, I'm, I'm getting a little bit better feel for how the road's going to work. Uh, okay, so then what I do, okay, this is what I said back on, I think it was August 17th, is I, I um, use this ACE hardware, okay, um, all-weather roof cement. Okay, and I applied it with a one inch wallpaper seam roller. And once, once I, uh, but, but the technique to do that was I put the paste down with a spatula and then I sprinkled, and you can see it, I'd sprinkled some very fine asphalt on top of it and then I rolled it from there. And uh, this, this is what I use. This is, uh, um, N scale cinder is what I use to sort of roll it. And I find that as I put it down and I can roll it with my finger and, and the ACE stuff is, is water soluble so it can come off your fingers pretty easily. Um, I, I keep on patting it in and rolling it in until it sort of gets a little, little wet on top and then I know I've got the right amount in. And then I just roll it a few more times. And Here's my road sort of in place on this module. And uh, obviously I needed uh, a whole construction crew to sort of put, finish, finish it off. And these are all from Zycon models. If anybody's seen Zycon, they're, they're brass, brass pieces uh, for the most part, other than the truck. But I've got a whole slew of these Zycon model paving and heavy duty equipment pieces. So they're rolling out the road. I mean, you cannot finish a road without using your, your, your paving material, paving equipment. And um, here it is, I sort of paved over the tracks. Um, I have put some chunks of wood in the middle. And um, this, is, this is what it's gonna look like with the exception of I don't have anything in under that parking garage, which is, part of that River Plate station, which as I, I showed on the first, mod, first um, slide, or the second slide, that I've got a YouTube video is about 40 minutes on how I actually built George Selios's, is Brownsview Depot, but I call it River Plate station. And I, basically there was, there's a, um, a cattle ranch in Buenos Aires um, along the River Plate, which runs south, which happened to be a family farm at one point or a stancia. So anyway, um, this is looking at the module together with that there's there's another road, asphalt road on the the module in front of this, which is that's majestic hardware on the left, um, a bar mills kit, and then you've got Stuffy's brewery uh, on the left, and then a little bit further down, which is blurry, you've got um 
the Franklin Watch Factory. Uh, not all George Selios' kits, so I've got a whole slew of them going down here with all the trackage. And you can see the tracks sort of running back of the building, around the front. Um, some switching opportunities in here. And then running all the way down to the new module. Okay, that's just a close up of the road in front of the, the Suffies Brewery. As you can see, it's, it, it, it nicely sort of rolls in and tucks into the scenery. Uh, that's in front of the watch factory. Uh, you can see another manhole cover inside of the, uh, in, in the asphalt. Everything sort of nicely wrapped through the buildings. Okay, and now here we, here's what everybody's been wanting to see, which is my um, Fall River construction, okay? So basically on the Fall River um, module here, I got used, this is another Ed Fuja kit, which I think uh, Jeff had the same model on his layout. Um, and what I've done is I've sort of put some um, grout down. And the reason why I'm using grout on this one, I use the grout also on that model that I brought over to Rhode Island, the Wisconsin Dairy Barn. I sort of put that into grout. Um, grout's good if it's relatively flat. Um, and um, this sort of worked for me. And basically it's in the background, there is a square there for the, um, for my uh, factory that's gonna go in. And notice I did put a foundation in. I ran a foundation um, of probably um, scale 12 by 12 wood and painted it. And um, so I could sort of run my foundation on my building. Also a place there for the um, chimney. And um, that's just a little close up of where I'm gonna put Put the building and you need to get your building in again like i said in order to figure out where you're going to put your your roadway and i have to keep on building up the ground because i wanted the the asphalt on to sort of sort of come right up to the track so that's my goal is to slowly build up my my grout in this situation uh to sort of get my roadway up because i don't need a lot of asphalt but i mean you can work with it just like putty or something and sort of build it up how you need to. And that's what I ended up doing with this uh, module. Um, this is a view from the right hand side of the module. Um, and I, basically I sort of had taken this module apart and then sort of rebuilt it because I took out the code 83 track and put in code 100. Um, so some of that plaster in the front was there but from before running over the tracks. And here is another view of, you know, putting in, putting in the grout. And as it starts drying, it's more pliable. You can sort of then sort of squish it with your finger and pat it in like putty around the edges of the buildings. And I kept on building up the, um, the plaster closer to the tracks. Um, Here's a view on the right hand side after I put a layer of grout in and I'm gonna put the majest I'm gonna put in another uh, hydrocal building in this location at a certain point. But again, I wanted to squish it into the into the uh, putty or not into the grout uh, in order to sort of get it sort of sort of feel to me like more of what it should do. Okay, and then this is uh, putting some sidewalk in around the, around the building because my asphalt's got to sort of come up properly to the edges of that sidewalk when I'm done. That's, that's just putting in my building. Down in Fall River, it's a bicycle shop. And it sells Reynolds strain tubes. That's putting in the, um, the hydrocal building. And by the way, my wife, Mary, made that building. She's very good at making things. As a matter of fact, she made the Fall River, mod, um, the Fall River factory 
I sort of helped a little bit by giving her some of my supplies and I probably framed up in back of the Ed Fuja building. Um, so, so there was like three, nine, and nine is 18 plus six on either side, 18, 24 pieces of hydrocal sort of put together on that, on the, on the building to the left. Okay, that's the Fall River factory in place. More, more plastic going down. You know, several layers going in to sort of get my elevations right. Uh, that's looking at it from the other side of the trap, from the other corner. This is another picture. Oh, you can see my, I'm saying here, on the back left, you can see my cranberry module, uh, which I sort of did at a clinic down, down here, actually made the elevation for it. The building itself was, as Doug can comment, was in the, um, in the Harwich Historical Society for 10 years. But I took it back and I sort of created a very nice elevation around it, which is another, mod, another clinic at some point on how I actually did that one. Again, just, just more, more build up, more build up. You can see, as I'm sort of wanting to sort of get the, you know, the road up to the track. And again, and then it's like, okay, now I've got all that grout dried up, and I've got the elevation pretty much where I want it. I'm going to use the same technique I used in 2014 with the um, River Plate module. And before that, the Franklin module. But again, I bring up the same same rolling pin. I think I've got a roller. I've got to sort of scrape that off a little bit and clean it up a little because it's a bit lumpy. And my applicator and my cement. Um, I put I'm putting it down with a scraper, and it's just an ever so ever so light uh, amount. I mean, you don't have to glob it on. You basically just want to take it with your applicator and squish it right into your material. Just squish it all the way down. It's probably not even an eighth of an inch thick. And then basically, I here is where I put my uh, uh, cinder on top of it. And at this point, it looks very grainy. It looks very lumpy. Um, and that's the way it's supposed to look until you actually put the roller on and start rolling it down. And as you can just barely see in that, that the moisture or the dampness of the asphalt is slowly starting to bleed through to the top. If it bleeds through too much, you just sprinkle some more cinder on top of it. And here it is. I pretty much got it down a very thin coat all the way around most of the buildings. And that's when I got it around the other side. Um, you don't have to, it's a big mistake at the beginning to try to stick it right up to the other material because it'll get sticky and gooey and get all over the place. So keep yourself away from your, your edges of your, say, um, that deck on the left-hand side of the building there until it starts to harden up a little bit. And when it hardens up, you can now use your finger and just tap it lightly into place. And just another angle, and it's sort of drying up a little bit. It's looking good to me. Um, again, same thing. I'm rolling it out, it takes a while. And again, hey, that, those, that paving crew that worked on the uh, uh, River Plate module did such a good job and they were very nicely priced that I was able to hire them back again to do the Fall River job. And now, um, my hand's moving quickly, but basically I have a piece of sandpaper and I'm sanding down the um, uh, cinder, okay? You wanna get the cinder down because you're still seeing some lumps on it, like it belongs in a, a tender in a steam engine. So you want to sort of um, sand it down a little bit. And also, as you're sanding it, you're sort of 
sort of swishing it around to make some tire tracks and um, get your and move your elevations because you can still move your elevation around with your sandpaper. And now I'm sort of getting it to the consistency that I want it to be. And then once I've got that done, I use paint. And here I use some, some black paint only because I, I sort of bought my uh, grimy black. And at the beginning, it's very absorbent. So you probably need six bottles at $4 a piece where I already had this black paint that I was using from my train module. So I sort of put that down a little bit and mix it with my grimy black. Uh, just to get the first layer. Notice in there too, you can see on the corner of the building and around it, some great, great covers. Um, there's a water grate cover there and on the other side of the building, I think you can see a manhole cover. But again, this is time when it's starting to get soft and squishy. Okay, and you've painted it to start squeezing in your um, other decals. And that was the paint. And as you look carefully on the roadway, you're starting to see little lumps, little cracks. And you, know, you never know how it's going to end out until you're done. I mean, it's like, like everything that we do, it's like, oh, this looks good. This doesn't look good. But I did find as your material starts drying up, it cracks. And I mean, that's exactly what you want to happen around an old building in Fall River. <laughs> and you notice the great, the great there and there's a manhole cover on the, on, on the other corner. And here you can see a few more cracks. And I'm now starting to sort of lay some um, greenery in. And I also have the greenery at this point just sitting there. But it does look, OK, like you've got some weeds growing in some cracks. So you can get some nice effects. I haven't really played with it much, but um, it does do what I wanted it to do. Okay, and this is now the building uh, in place on the module with the backdrop on, with my New Haven um, engine and some uh, B&M cars. And this is just a few more looks. I could do with a little bit more um, uh, weathering. Um, I gave up on the weathering because I have to finish off my AP awards, but uh, I'm getting some effects in there by using some white powders that you can accentuate some of the uh, cracks. Um, still not 100% where I want to be with it, but I've been working on it. And um, obviously you can see now I've got my railroad crossing um, pieces in there. So everything's flat and the, the whole road is up to exactly where I want it to be, that um, you're, you're coming right across those tracks without any sort of hill effect. It's coming from the front and rolling towards the back. And um, uh, keep in mind, I mean, you've got some cork and you've got railroad track with code 100 uh, track on it. And the whole roadway sort of uh, you can run your 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 car over that, and you're not going to find any jumps or anything. It's it's going to roll really nicely. And that's just looking from another view. And um, um, down the road, you can see my next module, which has two um, custom built um, trestle bridges. One's a twenty three and a half, and one's twenty three and seven eighths inch. Um, trestles with 3,174 nuts, bolts, and washers in it, and um, builders in scale building and uh, a Dave Frary building along there. That's a Tidewater Wharf kit in the background. And uh, it's another shot of this. This is this, this is a close up, obviously, of of the crossing. And another cross of the crossing, um, weathered down. This is going towards the back between the bicycle shop and that general store 
with the Union Pacific tanker going back and probably dropping off some heating oil into the building. And uh, B and M gondola sitting in the back there with our Ryder truck pass um, hanging out. Here's the uh, just another view of it. So I mean, I mean, I think the asphalt gives it a nice effect, and I, I, I just can't imagine not using this when I'm doing something like this. I mean, it's it's my go-to product. And here's some nice cracks along the road here. I mean, we're talking Fall River. We're talking something that needs a little repair. Um, and this, this is just a nice look of seeing some of the uh, weeds coming through around some of those cracks. And that's that part of it. And then I'm just going to show you um, just a few slides of how I did some of the other things that you might have seen in the background that you might have been looking at. Um, and I mentioned this before. So like here, this is um, Jamestown, um, Jamestown Water Stop. Okay, George Salios, one of his last buildings. But as you can see, I use this roofing cement and this one has, is an oil base. Um, I suppose either one could work, but I took every single one of those boards and I put, I painted the asphalt on two sides, the back and one side. Then I'd squish it on and then I'd take the next one and I'd put that in. So, I mean, it, the process, it's, once you get going, it doesn't take a long time. Probably took maybe an hour to sort of put that together. But heck, I've had this building for 10 years. So, it's well maybe not 10 but i mean anyway i mean it's 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 worth the investment once you get going to sort of do something and you can sort of also see how that oil starts seeping out between the wood but i seem to use this uh, this technique as well a lot when i'm sort of stacking um water tanks or or tanker cars wooden or wooden tanker cars together like that. And that's just what it kind of looks like as I was sort of placing it around earlier on. And here it is with the belts on it and the oil seeping through um, and the straps and the clamps on it. Just a further close up look at it on one of George's kits. And just another one. And then, okay, then, then the other thing is I made this cobblestone uh, parking, gar parking garage, as I mentioned before, at the River Plate. So how did I do that? Again, I'm using the effect that I just used the other day to make my um, um, pieces for, uh, for my, my engine stall. Um, I used the casting, Joel's casting resins. You mix one to one. And I happen to have, I actually had this mold, which is a cobblestone mold. And um, I made a very thin coat of it. And then I painted it with some gesso and glued it down. I hot glued it down. I use hot glue a lot when I'm mixing certain pieces together um, that need to be pushed down and stayed down in place where like um, carpenter cement or, or Elma's wood glue isn't going to work for you. You get a stubborn piece of wood that's just not going to sort of fit. Uh, I find hot glue works very nicely. So once I sort of put this in place, it's hot glued down. I use painted it with the gesso uh, because it, the gesso will accept paint colors better. And then I'm using um, um, this powder. Um, it's a tempura powder. And you can see on the next slide how the tempura powder sort of colors it up nicely for my garage. And I've got it in and an out for the, for the, you know, for the parking garage. And then I use a little bit of the Liquitex. And, and by the way, I just found like, I used to go to AC Moore to get my Liquitex 
uh, paints, but Staples sells them for four ninety nine a piece. So you don't have to sort of find a craft store to get your 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 colors. Because here I've used the Payne's Gray, the Burn Umber, and the Raw Sienna in just very very light doses and sort of painted it and squished it all down. And that's just a closer up look. And that's where it was before. And that's what it looks like with the um, parking garage in its place. And th this, is, this is just another thing I'm throwing in as a little extra tidbits. Uh, how I did that cement, I used uh, you know, the focal concrete with the Durham wood putty. And I always find using that Durham wood putty gives it a nice gritty look uh, before I put it in place. And obviously I'm doing this, the nice thing is I'm doing it not in the module, but outside of the module on this, on, on these pieces of, of wood. And um, then I'll place it in already built with my step in it. It's just easier to work, work with and actually put the, the pieces on uh, when you're not sort of digging into the middle of a module. And you can see on the left hand side where all the pieces sort of on George's template sort of go together. And then I'm just giving it a wash in this situation with uh, some, um, I think India ink. It's probably India ink, maybe a little blend of some brown um, paint in it and sort of putting it in until I get my desired result. And that's it with the actual ramp on it that's going to go into the module. And that's where it ended up going, as we know. And that's what it looked like in place. Oh, and then basically I used that, that asphalt right on this, um, I call it Grumpy's Diner, which is my grandkids call me Grumpy, but it's um, the um, Roadside Delights uh, module, which again, I made some various modifications to actually work it and uh, sort of glued, I use um, two part epoxy to get all the metal castings on my buildings, because I find over time, if you look at that Franklin Watch Factory way back, some of those pictures, some of those pieces on top ended up falling off because of being bounced around in the car, vibrating. I, I now really work hard at sort of getting my roofs together and making some sort of composite underneath it um, and drill holes to it and sort of really make sure that they stay on forever. But again, um, that could be another clinic. They put that down on uses of glues. And there it is, dried up, uh, my second to last slide, um, giving it a nice um, weathered look. And that's the end of my slideshow. I, I haven't been looking at the time, but I'm pretty sure I'm probably right where I should be. So that's it.